Let's see if he'll let us on. Oh, come on, Zach. You, you can do it. All right. Here we go. Let's wait until that comes on. There we go. We're all set there. Get rid of that. There we go. Let's record this for posterity to the cloud. All right. Hey, everybody, it's Wednesday. That means it must be Whiskey Wednesday. <laughs> oh, you got a good crowd tonight, Mara. Yeah, That's thank great. you. Thank you all for being here. This is Maura Conley. She is the uh, founder, uh, chief cook and bottle washer of Mad River Distillery up in the friendly and great state of Vermont. All right. <laughs> and... Uh, we got a variety of things to go through with you tonight. And the cool part is um, we've sort of changed things up a little bit. And we got some, because um, cause we've done some of these before, but we wanted to make sure that everybody sort of knew also how to use these in cocktails. Mm -hmm. So some of the, the core brands that are usually uh, we taste on their own, we've, Mo, Mo's made some great cocktails for you tonight and, uh, and for you guys to try. So... Let's start with some of the flagships. So tell me a little bit, first of all, let's, let's, we're going to start with the maple cask rum. So the maple cask rum is a really beautiful whiskey drinker's rum. Um, so a little bit about our rums. Um, we do not use a molasses base. We use a Demamara sugar base, which Mike was kind enough to bring this sample in. And this is usually that's what he puts in his coffee, all of it. But <laughs> it <was> like, <laughs> but this is a Demamara sugar. So it's an unprocessed uh, pure cane sugar, which is drier in nature and um, creates a, a spirit that we then uh, age in a new American charred oak barrel. So we treat this uh, the first generation of the maple cask rum as a whiskey. So it's a number three char. Then we um, send that barrel off to a maple syrup producer. That maple syrup producer gets this. Well, wait a minute. That's, that's Al Wood. And Al these guys Wood. all know Al Wood because Al Wood is our, is our maple syrup guy. Yeah. And the wood, the wood, wood maple syrup is one of the best maple syrups the best. In, in Vermont. So when we worst. met Al, he was buying barrels from Kentucky. And we said, oh, you don't need to do that. We we're going to lend you barrels. And so that's how our maple cask rum was born. So this maple cask rum is, um, is twice aged. And it's, it definitely has notes of whiskey. Um, if you've tried it before, uh, it's really quite delicious. So it goes in a rum cocktail or a whiskey cocktail. And Mo Haran, right over here, uh -huh. um, is, has made a uh, cocktail for you. So this is a maple, ca maple cast rum old-fashioned for you guys, and that's actually in slot number one. So you guys can try that. You know, be, we're gonna try, as you're drinking this, and and you try that. I also want to I also want to mention too that we're not trying it tonight. But any time that you need a white rum to make um, any type of like uh, uh, a da daiquiri or mojito or anything like that, the rum forty four uh, that's made up in 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 Vermont with Demerara sugar is probably one of the finest that you'll find. You don't have to go to an island. Just go to the uh, great state of Vermont and find some really. Uh, or in Vermont. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't want to tell everybody where it is because then they'll come up and steal our rum. Blueberries, you can use. Uh, yeah, you can put blueberries in it and let those soak. Yeah. So this rum 44 is super clean. It's uh, we don't back sweeten any of our products. So um, when this comes off the still, we charcoal filter it just once to get, you know, a little clarity with it. And then it is beautiful. It's at 80 proof. It takes infusions really nicely. You can make a coffee liqueur. You can make a blueberry rum. You can you can. Uh, I basically put whatever's in my garden, any kind of herb, I put it in, and 
it makes a great uh, infusion. I'm going to give you even a better one. Forget all of these uh, malt-based uh, seltzers. Uh huh. Just take this. Take it in a great polar, like flavored seltzer. Or a fever this, tree grapefruit. Fever tree grapefruit, and just add this to it instead. You'll have a, a much better seltzer or a much better uh, and soda. Much more affordable. Yeah. Great, great stuff. Well, right. try the, try the, if you haven't already, and they're already done, I know this, but <laughs> I haven't tried it. Oh, that's really nice. I like that. Uh, we gave all of you, um, we'll try nice to get work. them up online, but we gave everybody has the maple cask uh, old fashioned recipe. Um, in front of you, and that's mm -hmm. all the sheets that you guys have tonight. So you can check those out. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike, we can't hear you on the thing. So what? What do? What do? What do not at this is at ninety two proof. Okay. Yeah, it's a ninety two proof, in, which is goes great. The little higher proof always, I think, shows better. And it's a little bit brighter in a cocktail. I'm sure Mo would agree. So with you me. understand that all of our spirits are ninety, except for our. Um, Rum 44 and our vanilla rum are all of those are 80. All of the others are at 90 and above. So this whole lineup is 92. This is 96. And then some of our um, uh, limited reserve uh, products are 100 proof. Yeah. The other thing to remember about that, and, and, and most of you guys all know that we, you get 92 proof usually means that uh, it's the magic number. We call it the magic number because you don't have to chill filter it. Um, the, um, the, the extra uh, sort of fatty acids and uh, fatty strains stay in suspension. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't get cloudy when it gets cold. If you can leave it at 92, you don't have to chill filter it, um, which makes it a less processed product. And we don't like to process. We are no bells and whistles, just good tasting stuff. That's right. <laughs> All right. So the second, the second, uh, now we're, now we're actually into, now we're actually into whiskey. We're into bourbon. This one is done also at the 90, 92 proof. Yep. And this is the straight bourbon. Uh, so, uh, straight bourbon has to be, uh, at least aged two years, um, uh, to be called straight bourbon. And, um, you want to tell us a little bit more about yep. this one? So our straight bourbon, um, when we started this distillery, we wanted to be a whiskey house. We, uh, started with a rum just because rum was easier and less expensive to experiment with with our still and then we came up with this great product so that's why that is in existence our bourbon is where we want it to be and uh, the straight bourbon is a four grain weeded bourbon so it's 70 percent non-gmo corn wheat barley and oats it's one of the few uh uh, bourbons that has oats in the mash bill, that oh, those oats are going to give you a nice creamy mouthfeel on the finish. It's a super easy drinking bourbon. Mm -hmm. um, so no rye in this at all, too. No, so zero rye. And the reason that we did not put rye in this straight bourbon is because we have a rye that's 100% rye. So we, when we were developing our lineup and then We've created some other things since our core lineup was developed. Um, but we wanted to completely differentiate all of our spirits um, from one another. So the weeded bourbon was intentional, and we didn't want to be the same as the other distilleries out there. So It creates a different, uh, different mouthfeel on it, yeah. too. It's really, it's really yeah. nice. And tonight we, we figured that we would try you and just show you the versatility of this of this uh, this straight bourbon whiskey, and uh, we made a gold rush. So Mo made a gold rush for you, which is two ounces of straight bourbon, uh, three fourths of an ounce of lemon juice, and three fourths of an ounce of, of honey simple syrup. Shake double strain into a cocktail glass and garnish with a lemon swath. So you guys get that? That's in slot number two to try. It's the gold Cheers. looking one that's called Gold Rush. Get it? Oh, nice job, Mo. It's it's really nice because um, it's really well balanced, but you can still taste the bourbon in that, mm -hmm. which is really nice. I like that a lot. It's got a nice nice finish to it, too. So this bourbon is really versatile. It goes really nicely because of the, the softness of the bourbon, because of 
that uh, the oats. The oats. It goes really nicely with any kind of sour. It's also, you know, it's vi- very versatile. It can be in a Boulevard EA or a Manhattan. Yeah. I like it. Yep. I like it. And I like the fact that the way she made it too. Um, yes. That you can, you know, like, we, okay, there's, there's, there's two philosophies around making cocktails that, that, I've, that I've started to notice. It's either let's hide everything or let's showcase it. Mm-hmm. You know, let's, let's use the other ingredients to sort of enhance the flavor of the main flavors of, of the product of the bourbon right. or the whiskey. And this really does. I really like this one a lot. I like, I sort of like citrus based cocktails anyways i just think they're just so much brighter yep um and they sort of like it's almost like a little pick me up when you're drinking it too so do you guys like that one so far so good yeah all right okay we're easing it's all it. right yeah all right so number three number three number three is the double barrel you want to tell what this one is yes so this is our straight bourbon and then we have a relationship with, um, well, we have a relationship with a couple of different wineries. We wanted um, to finish our bourbon in a really uh, rich Cabernet barrel. We, um, we source our barrels from a very small winery um, called Davis Estates. Uh, it's in the Napa Valley. They have very rich ruby Cabernet, which gives it real depth of flavor. Um, and it really brings a completely, uh, a different dimension to that bourbon, you know, where it's a, a little sweeter, a little Yeah, you can definitely cherry. smell it right on the nose too. Yeah. And we played around with a bunch of different barrels, but we really enjoy, um, working with the Davis Estates folks. They're a small uh, winery. They were born the same year as we were, 2011. Um, um, We sort of feel like they do things in the same vein as we do at Mad River. I think it's really cool, too, because when you taste this, too, you can definitely taste the influence of the wine, but it's more more integrated um, than just pop, like popping it over. Um, And it doesn't overpower the the whiskey. I find some sometimes with these finished whiskeys, mm. um, they become too sweet. Yeah, it, 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 it sort of takes over. Mm-hmm. This um, this just rounds it out. Yeah, I think so yeah. too. I think that's a really really nice nice one there too. I, I like I I like the double barrels because they're a little bit they're a little bit different. Um, they're never. I, and here's one of the things is like. They're, they're never sort of the, um, because of the nature of using wine barrels, and when you do it, they're never always the same. Well, and, and because every vintage It's different. Is no, no, different, and I, that's right? what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they're never really, like, the same. So it's one of those ones, if you find one that you like, and I do like that you guys, you'll, you'll tell us what batch number they are and what bottle number really is to make it different, but the batch number does. So if you find one that you saw to, saw to like, there's no um, card on this one because these are like one-offs, guys, just so you're not missing one, okay? Um, but, um, but, but if you do like a certain one and you, it's really hitting you quite right, go and find that batch. That's and, right. And, and, you know, and take it. That's right. The good thing about ex- bourbon is, there, uh, well, whiskey is it really never goes bad. No, and, and if you miss something, the good thing about whiskey is there's always another whiskey. So there you go. There you go. So we have experimented, as I said, with some other um, barrels. We did a project with um, Silver Oak. Um, Jordan, I think, wasn't it? We did some Jordan. Um, We have a couple of other um, wineries in the pipeline, which are going to be really exciting. So um, hopefully we get those going, too. What do you guys think of this one? Did you like this one? Yeah, I like this one, too. It's really good. Mm-hmm. And this is a limited edition. So, right. I mean, there's more percolating now, but um, this is. Not... You sort of have to see, like, because they'll, they'll, it will change up. It changes up. And, you know, um, when you're finishing um, your whiskey, I mean, we, we taste all of our product before we harvest it. And um, when you're finishing it, it really depends on the temperature, the time of the year that it went into the barrel, you know, the the weather fluctuation, the whole thing of whether or not, you know, that whiskey is finished to right. uh, the level 
where we want to sell well, it. Well, you know, uh, you, you know, Mimi's up there too. I know that she's up yep. there tasting all these things, and they started trying to get it at the at the optimum, yeah, peak of what what you well, want. Well, we we taste it as a every group day. every day, right? Yeah. Oh, it's a tough job, Arnold, <laughs> but I guess somebody has to do it. Just I got to get up today. Why? Because I got to go taste some more product. And the today. best part is, I only have to walk two hundred yards to move to the distillery. Well, the worst part is I only have to walk two hundred yards. <laughs> Depending on the day, I would assume. <laughs> All right. So, what is the next one that we have? Today? The next one is our burnt rock bourbon, and this is really cool. This is something definitely different. Yes. So. Um, this burnt rock bourbon was born one day when I was walking that 200 yards up to the distillery and I see Al Hilton, who's our distiller, has made a smoker and he's smoking some barley. And I'm like, Al, what are you doing? He said, I have this idea. I want to do a, um, a bourbon with some smoked barley over maple wood and, um, and we're going to experiment with it. So we did 70 corn and the rest uh, uh, malted barley smoked over maple wood. And it was so sweet. We're like, oh, no. So we started playing around and we added rye to the mash bill. And so now this is 70% of that non-GMO corn grown in the Northeast Grain Shelf, uh, which is Vermont, Massachusetts, and um, um, New York, and then 15% of it is a malted barley smoked over that maple wood and 15% rye. So we're getting into that more traditional bourbon uh, profile where you have the rye in it, and it, so you have a little bit more depth of flavor, a little bit of spiciness, um, and this is terrific in a Manhattan. It goes really nicely with... Um, a cherry herring, let's say. Remember that drink, Mo? <laughs> um, so anyway, so it's it's a... Yeah, but you went traditional and started doing a mash bill that's more traditional, but then you said, but now you're smoking it. So yeah, now yeah, you're outside smoking. the box oh, again. Because we, we don't like to stay inside the Vermont. box. Because you're from Vermont. We don't, we're not in the box, people. Okay. Right. You so, can smell that smoke right on the nose, yeah. too. And this and it's is different. 92. What is he using? What is he using to smoke it though? He's smoking um, maple, oh, maple, maple wood. Maple wood. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to really get like I mean, when, when these guys, uh, you know, they're all whiskey people, so they're thinking smoked. They're thinking of you know malted, you know, thinking of like you know like peated and yeah. stuff like that. This is not. This is a completely different beast. Completely different beast. We have a peated bourbon that we experimented with also, but, um, but this is, you know. That corn, you're gonna, it's going to be super sweet because it's this heirloom corn. Um, uh, we spend about 60 cents a pound for our corn. We don't buy, you know, five cents a pound corn. Uh, by the way, 60 cents a corn is a, an expensive corn. It's a very expensive. lot of corn. I yeah. mean, the amount that you use to make batches is, is yeah. up there. It adds up yeah. very quickly. Uh, very quickly. It's very expensive to get you know, as a small uh, the, distillery. Um, uh, like, you know, some of the big guys will be, it, they'll be, uh, it'll be cents. They'll be spending like cents or portions of cents for their corn. Yeah, you can get corn, but we found uh, for less, but we found we didn't like the flavor profile of that corn. So right. we're sticking to our guns. We really want the non-GMO product for my, um, uh, Organic when possible, but non-GMO is much more important to us, and yeah. and uh, we want it locally sourced. Is so. that because is that because like when you look start looking at like organic? I, see, here's the problem I have with organic. If you don't use pesticides, it's pretty much organic. But, but, but you but have to do a lot of paperwork. Well, no, that's the other part of this. That's what I'm getting at. You have to do a lot of paperwork to certify mm -hmm. yourself as organic. Mm -hmm. And I think for most of us, if it's like if you're just not doing one, if you're not just doing that. Mm -hmm. everybody else is sort of, you know what I mean? It's sort of cool with it. I mean, it, it, it's like why you got to spend the money to get it all certified mm -hmm. organic. I mean, you don't have to advertise it that way, but you say, well, we don't use any pesticides. What, I mean, what else are you looking for? Right. You know, right. We use real water. I mean, well, you know, and we work, use really good water. Well, yes. To make the whiskey, I was talking about watering the corn, but oh, yes, oh, I see where yeah. you're going with that. No, but, 
But also, if you have a wind that blows across from a, a fellow farmer, then right. some of your stuff can go from organic to non organic. Non organic. Exactly. I think. So there's a lot of there's a lot of yeah, a lot of things yeah. that can yeah, yeah. I mean, I think when you're organic and you want to get certified organic, everybody around you has to be organic too. Mm-hmm. It's, it That's creates right. these bigger buffer zones mm-hmm. to get that happening. And, and yeah. you know, and like I said, non GMO, non GMO, and then don't use pesticides. That's, That's right. pretty cool, right? Yeah. And uh, what do you guys think of the burnt rock? I like everything but the name. So the name, the name. I know it's getting in trouble for this one. Oh yeah, that's the. the I didn't choose the name, but. So she's cool with me saying that. Yeah. Because if you chose the name, but, it'd be a different story the, up here right now. That's right. There'd be daggers, but the um, the name comes from uh, a hiking trail. There's yeah. a, uh, in the Mad River Valley. There's a really beautiful hiking trail that you walk up, and you see these beautiful sunsets, and that's where. This was named after. All right. Well, I suppose we'll let that one slide. By Al, by Al and my husband John. Yeah. Well, so, you know, um, now, now that like uh, you and Mo are there, and Mimi are there, you probably should do the naming. Just point that out there. <laughs> I just, I'm just gonna point that out there. So, don't let Mike name anything, please. <laughs> it's for kids. No. Anyways. <laughs> Re- really good. Do you guys like this one though? A little different, right? A little different. I, I already see a couple of you that I can see the wheels turning of like different recipes you could use this in because it does have that different flavor profile. I like that one. Mm. Everything it but, really holds up. Everything and, but and the name. Everything but the name. Well, maybe that's what it should be called. Everything but the name. And that would have been better. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, here's here's the next one. I like the name of this one. I like the name of this one, but I like the flavor better. And I like the concept behind it better. I mean, I just love everything about this. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's one of those products that is um, so true to Mad River and is basically, defi- I think, defines Mad River. Well, so this Revolution Rye. That's yep. where you... Yeah, that's where I'm yeah. going. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, no, yeah. no, it was the Burnt Rock. Sorry. <laughs> So the these three were our original products. Yeah. And the rye it, when we were going for flavor profiles, the rye was con- was very distinctly created. Um we wanted 100% rye. We didn't want to add any Barley to it. We did not want anyone to think that we're buying a rye from anyone, any other source. We're totally cool with whoever wants to do that, but we're not craft uh, bottlers. We're craft distillers, so we okay. make everything on our own. Um, uh, it is 100% rye grown in New York State, and then we um, met this woman named Andrea at Valley Malt, who does a lot of the malting and toasting for the craft brewers. And my husband read about her in some newspaper, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, something. He called her and said, I really want to make a rye. This is the flavor profile. And that week, we had two tons of rye sent to our distillery, no credit check, no nothing, and it was so delicious. And we have been working with her ever since. We we're one of her largest uh, distilleries. Um, it's three rye varietals from New York. And one of them is malted and toasted. It's almost treated like a coffee bean. And so you're going to get these really complex flavors. It's 96 proof. You're going to get mocha, chocolate, cacao. Maybe some black pepper, green pepper, depending on your palate. Um, it is not a wallflower. It, right. It can stand it just, alone. You know, it, there's two things about this story that just hit me. First of all, it's because I don't think everybody understands uh, so, so much of like distilling and the whole process that goes into it. This is farming. This is all about agriculture. 
uh, we, we, we tend to like pull it out of that, but at its heart, what are you using? You're using, you're using agricultural products to make, to concentrate and make a distilled spirit that has alcohol in it. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is such like for her to just ship stuff up there. No credit check. Nothing is such a new England thing to do. It's, it's, it goes, it harkens back to me is like farmer helping farmer. Yeah. You know, like you need to do this. We have we have the capacity to do this. We can put this together. You need this. We'll do it. We'll and figure to trust out everything. Us. Out. Right. We'll to figure. Trust well, us. it's pretty cool, right? I've seen I've seen I've seen people from Hadley take care of people that don't pay their bills. So you're just very lucky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, that is where I mean that's 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 Shaw that's the Shaw Rebellion, by the way, the Whiskey yeah. Rebellion was in Hadley. So just remember that um, they think very highly of their whiskey. Yes. First of all, in in in, in Massachusetts, uh, uh, in that area, and that that sort of whole thing of like, we're just going to help a, a a fellow farmer out. Right. This is what you need. We we know how to do that. We'll supply that, and make that's how relationships uh, in this business and really we've been do loyal to one another since. Right, and no, she in, in a way not that she meant to, but she bought your loyalty. I mean, yeah. not that she meant to do it. She did it because that was the right thing to do. Right. But in that case, as a as a true New Englander, what did you do? I'm going to be loyal to you, right? Like a dog. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Mo made for you uh, tonight uh, with this, and I think it just it just sings so well of the different type of rye that this is. Um, this is the Black Manhattan. So she made you a Black Manhattan with revolutionary two ounces of revolution. Revolution rye whiskey, one Amaro. She used, which one did you use, Averna? What's that, Montenegro? Montenegro uh, Amaro. Two dashes of Angostura bitters and a dash of orange bitters. And then... Hold on, Mo. Come on up here for a minute. I'm going to have you put on the headset for a minute. Because no, I, here. Oh, we have another one. I want just you to talk out. about the difference. Here, just hand that to her. Just hand that to her. She'll be fine. Say just hi, Just come Mo. sit down, Mo. Yeah. Talk about the difference between a Manhattan and a black Manhattan. Okay. Yeah. One has black in it, in the word <laughs> Manhattan, before it, no. Here, hold on, honey. I got to get you, hold on, I got to get you up here. Hold on. There you go. Okay. Go so a classic Manhattan has uh, whiskey and sweet vermouth and bitters. And then a black Manhattan, instead of the sweet vermouth, it has some type of Amaro, a sweeter Amaro versus a bitter one. Montenegro really fits that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the Montenegro really balances out the chocolate coffee notes in the whiskey. So it really makes a beautiful cocktail. I think it makes it pop. Yeah, it really makes it pop. pop. Any kind of bitter, like uh, this makes an amazing Boulevardier. Uh, also. Man of all town? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything with um, some bitter uh, is going to make that chocolate really pop. In, a, in my Black Manhattans, I typically use Chinar. Okay. Um, but this is good, too. Yeah. This is actually really good. I, I like the, the, the combination yeah. together. Yeah. It does really, really well. Yeah. And this is, this is not a difficult. I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. That's my middle name. I don't like if it takes longer than two minutes to make a drink. I want nothing to do with it. This takes less than two I minutes. I know. That's what yeah. I'm saying. This is actually it's boom, a, bang, boom. Ingredients. Yeah. Yeah, right. if we get to four, I, I, start, I start losing concentration. So it's <laughs> great. Uh, the Especially after the first one. It's really, really simple, so everyone can do them at home. Right. Yeah. yeah. And now you have the recipe, so you, yeah. there's no excuse. I'm still yeah. lazy, but I'll say to John, Johnny on the spot, make me this, and he'll make it for me. Yes, Lisa, what was your question? Yeah, that coffee and chocolate... Yeah, it really pops. Yeah. That rye coffee and chocolate really pops yeah. is what Lisa's saying. To, yeah. So it really does. I love this stuff. Yeah. It, and it, what's yeah, so you, funny is you that... You would think there was chocolate bitters in this cocktail because it pops so much. And when you put chocolate bitters in with the rye, it almost takes away the chocolate notes, which is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it's Chocolate it's, on chocolate does not work. No. What are you telling me? All right. Yes. It, it, like knocks, it. it blocks itself out. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. Negates it. I yeah. like it. I like this. I like this one too. And again, uh, what I really like is we, we, we were having this discussion because we were going to have so many 
uh, products tonight for you guys to taste, and we were getting up into the double digits. Um, and I know for some of you, you're like, that'd be just fine. Thank you very much. But for the owner of the liquor store that has to send you home at night, not so good. But um, Mo did a really, I think, fantastic job of picking out recipes that really highlight the whiskey that you're trying. So mm -hmm. it's it's like, again, we get to the set. It's like, you've, you know, if you've had these on their own before, there's not there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's more than one way to drink a whiskey or a mm -hmm. rum or whatever. And if you make a well-balanced cocktail, those can be very um, uh, those can be very good too. Uh, That's right. You know, for you purist out there, go like you know. I don't Particularly like with the holidays coming up, and you may you have can parties, batch these. You can batch them, put them in your refrigerator, just pour them out. All this is a good bat. These what what Mo made tonight for us. These are very good batched cocktails. Yeah, I batch them. I batch them all. So yeah, so yeah, your case this afternoon. The secret is you're trying batch cocktails and you didn't even know it. Exactly. <laughs> We've substituted the, the your usual coffee with rye whiskey. <laughs> Forget Folgers. <laughs> All right. So, so what's, what's really nice is you can put this in the freezer and then just pour it out and you have it up, have a little cherry, and voila. And, and you're I done. Think, yeah. Good to go. Good to go. All right. Well, well just stay up here because. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mel. No problem. We got two more to go through. So, Mo, just stay up here. Okay. That's fine. I will. That's great. Um, and the two that you're, the, the, the next two that you're going to try tonight are brand new products, right? Well, there's a, there's a, a sort of a difference in the, in the brand new products that, that new expressions, I should say. And I think the first one we're doing is the rye again, right? Mm -hmm. We're doing the rye, but now this rye, so, this rye is 10 years old. It is so delicious, <laughs> if I don't say so myself. It is uh, the same mash bill of our Revolution rye, but it is a combination of um, two or three barrels. I think we may have just done two barrels and um that's called the micro batch that's the smallest batch you can get yeah it's two barrels yeah exactly and it is um it has completely um you know so rye does not just have the trajectory of with age it gets better you know rye is sort of a temperamental grain it um it goes up and down in its life cycle where when we um took this out of the barrel, we're like, oh my God, we have something here. And it's very smooth. It's 100 proof. It's the same mash bill, but you're going to see the maturity on it has, uh, is quite lovely. Here's the, here's the thing that um, for a typical rye, and I know this isn't typical rye, um, that happens. Rye, rye whiskey for me of trying a lot of different ryes and going along is it matures at a younger age than bourbon does. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's 100% or not, as long as yeah. the majority of the whiskey is rye, it tends to show itself pretty well after two years. Um, Four-year rye, if you see four-year ryes out there, don't even worry about it. They're usually, those are almost fully matured ryes. They taste great. They, got, they have some really great flavors to them. The problem with rye is it's not even at 10. When you start getting older than that, they start to change in a way that sada doesn't show the rye characteristic anymore. Well, and that's, you got to watch that. And this, does, this still does. Don't, yeah. I, I don't no, wanna... no, no. And that was one of our... So our revolution rye is typically aged for less than two years. And the reason being is that chocolate note in in the revolution rye sort of goes away the longer you age it and as you taste this 10-year rye there is chocolate rye in there but you can just get the essence of the chocolate versus it being in your so face. in your yeah. face you know i think it's really nice it's mellowed out in such a way that it is a different beast mm -hmm. but that beast is a pretty mellow yeah it's, Absolutely. A, you know, it's smooth. It's mellow. And I like the 100 proof at, at this at 100 proof. Yep. 
I think that's, mm-hmm. that's sort of nice too, because that, right. that's going to gives it a little bit more of that, um, that liveliness that it may lack at a lower proof at being at 10 years old. What's so interesting is I was, uh, at a, an event with some whiskey folks in, uh, in Connecticut. It, this is not sold in Connecticut, um, but I just wanted them to taste it, and they couldn't believe it. Can we get rid of Connecticut as far as New England goes? Yes. I mean, I just, can we just stop that? Yes. New England is, is obviously Vermont and Maine and New Hampshire and Massachusetts. And <laughs> we'll go as far as Rhode Island. Yeah, Rhode Island. Yeah. But, 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 but Connecticut? Mm. New York can have it. Yeah, they, New York can have it. Well, they have half of it already. They might as well just take the rest of it. <laughs> right. I am going to get so much hate mail from people in Connecticut right now. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. people were so surprised that it was a hundred proof because it is. Um, it drinks pretty smoothly. Mm-hmm. And um, so this just this uh, rye is a limited edition. Um, there is not a lot of it. Uh, we only are selling it in Massachusetts. Vermont and um, not in Connecticut. Nope. Not in Connecticut and (laughs) um, very limited in Rhode Island. So, um, so, so enjoy it. Enjoy it. What'd you guys think of this? Like this? It's really cool, right? Yeah. Yeah. 10 years in New Oak. Mm -hmm. I really like this one a lot. I think it's I think it's really cool. Well, we're gonna try the. I want you guys to try the next one. I'm well, gonna go I'm back and talk a little bit about this right, just so oh, sure. how Absolutely. difficult it is. So we're a small little distillery. We it's in a renovated horse barn on my property. Um, craft distillers have difficulty moving from 25 gallon barrels to 53s, and we sort of, you know, got that under our belt somewhat early. But these. Uh, for us to be able to age something for 10 years is really sort of uh, took a lot of discipline it's a and self-control, you yeah. know, and, um, and we're just thrilled that we were able to offer this to you guys. Yeah, so. your production, what's, what's your production per year? Uh, not a lot. Uh, that's a very specific number. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> now, is that a multiple of 10? I'm not sure. But but no, but it, I've been there. We, we Randall are, and I were Randall and I have been up there, and, and there's not a lot of road. Room. Yeah, there's not a lot of room up there. We did go off the road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. It happens. What's that? Well, here's what happened. We we did make it. We did make it up there, and we did go off the road. We 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 got the van back on the road. Um, uh, going down was was interesting. So we're going on top down, of a hill. We're going a dirt down road. Yeah, it's a hill. That you need four wheel drive for. It's not a, it's, it's, it's more than a hill. I, I mean, <laughs> seriously? Yeah. It's a hill. Okay. I guess in Vermont, it's a hill. Anywhere <laughs> else, that would be a, uh, you know, a straight wood death plummet. Exactly. <laughs> it Mo, was okay when I you were going Mo straight. It's when the turn came up. Yeah. It's when the yeah, turn came stuck. up that, that, uh, that we you really had to watch it. Mud. So, yeah. They are up there. So there's not a lot of, uh, it is a small. It is a small place, and, and 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 by by God, I don't know how they jenga everything in there, but they do, and um and some great products are coming out the other side, which is is more impressive. Well, so. we have the uh, the ability to determine whether or not we sell it or not, um, because we're not owned by anyone else. We can make that determination. We have, right. you know. We won't sell anything. We won't drink ourselves. So we have high standards. And so. Um, that could have went the other way, you know. <laughs> what do you mean? I drink everything, you know. <laughs> no, but they do. They really do. And, and you can tell by the quality of stuff that, that yeah. does come out of there. Mm-hmm. I, we, we were amazed. Randall went up there and they hadn't released the, uh, the Rum 44 yet. Uh, when we were up there and we're like, you guys gotta like, do a this silver is, rum. yeah, this is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and what we, you know, this, so we, we launched it three days before COVID shut down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I told you, you should have went higher proof. You could have used it as a disinfectant <laughs> anyways, but, but really good. And I really like this 10, this 10, this 10 year rye. Yeah. It really yeah. shines really well. Yep. And it, even though it's the same Nashville, it doesn't, you know, it, it, it distinguishes itself enough from the your flavors of all flavor. just sort of merge together yeah. in a really, um, harmonious way. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Very harmonious. harmoniously. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Next up. 
What do we got? Is our Summit Single Malt. You like that name? Yeah, actually, I like that better than Burnt Something, whatever rock. Burnt Rock. <laughs> and, so, and by the way, you only live on a hill, so is it really a summit? <laughs> in Vermont, yes. Any place else than Vermont, it's a summit. Don't worry about it. So this is the summit. Uh, so single malt. we make a. We've. Um, you may have tasted some of our single malt before. Our single malt uh, typically is through our partnerships with all the la local craft breweries in in Vermont. It's called Hopscotch. Um, we work with different craft breweries each year and. Um, we make one to two barrels a year of this hopscotch. And we've worked with um, Von Trapp and Lawson's and 14 Star and Zero Gravity and um, uh, a whole host of other ones. This single malt is all ours. It's not made from that beer wort. This is made from 100% barley. It is um, uh, Al Hilton, our distiller. Uh, this is his baby. He's uh, He did this all on his own. It's been aged officially five years, but, you know, five years, 11 months. So it's close to six years. It's, um, you know, a really nice uh, American whiskey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Will you guys try it and see what you think? I like it. I thought it was really good. When I, I get, I get, I was fortunate enough to get to try this earlier, um, when they were for, before it even was bottled. And it doesn't taste like it's a hundred proof. Yeah, really nice. It's done a really great finish and a long finish for mm -hmm. for for that too. What do you guys think? Yes, no. I mean, some people don't like single malts. I mean, that's that's okay too. But. Well, a lot of people expect single malts to have, you know, you know, a uh, a sherry finish or a you know a yeah but I mean, single i mean single moss from single moss from scotland from like the highland area i like a lot of just are just um you know ex bourbon cask yep and nothing nothing too crazy yeah. yeah uh you know um and they're always really nice and crisp clean um and, and got a good feel to them i think this i think this hits that on the head yeah mm -hmm. you know i think this this hits that on the head one of the things that we so now that you've tried both of those uh, we, Maura and I had a discussion about how to, how to launch these. And um, <laughs> Mike, do you want to come up here? No, no, that's okay. Mike can stay right where he is. But here, because because this was all me. I don't know how Mike got like thrown under the bus somewhere along the line. But <laughs> but we, it, we Maura was up here asking me what what should we do, and I said, well, how are these going to sell? I mean, and she was like, you know, seven fifties. Um, eighty nine ninety nine. Okay. The problem is, is that at eighty nine ninety nine for let's say a single malt, there's a lot of stuff that it's it's economies to scale. They're not they're not they're not jacking it up. It's just this is what it costs them to make something like this. And right now in the current economic climate, I said, geez, you know that's going to be that might be a tough nut for somebody to jump into a new category, especially a, a single malt from Vermont, and you only have a small, num a small amount of your 10-year-old rye. Why not put them in 375s so that everybody could, could get a thing in, could, could try it? So they did, and they're, uh, they're, they're $50 a 375. So I put my money where my mouth is, and I said, okay, that's great. They're, they're, if you bought both of them, they're, they're 100 bucks. I want everybody to start to try these. What we decided to do here at Julio is to say, okay, buy both of them. They're $89.99, which is what you would have paid for a seven fifty. dollars But that. you get an additional. But you can, you could, you, you now you can buy both. Yeah. Get two great whiskeys for the same price as that one bottle. And you get to try them and you get to try your friends on them. And here's the, and this is, was my side of point. And that 10 year old, which you're not going to do all the time, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to go farther because now you That's can get right. more people to actually try it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, hence why they are 375s up here. Um, and I think that um, you, you guys try it. You're not in for a whole 750. You, you know, if you want to just get one bottle, it's, it's $49.99. It's not, again, not not crazy money, but if you want to get both, it's eighty nine ninety nine, 
And you can try both of them and you can impress your friends and neighbors with those. Because go. when you try other people on this, it's going to go, what is this? It's delicious. But what is it? Oh, it's from Vermont. Oh, okay. Now I understand. Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe not, but you can now tell the story, right, of what th this sort of crazy sort of thing is. And uh, um, we got some great other products coming out uh, this year um, from, from Mad River, including a single barrel uh, rum that's going to be coming out. It's a double barrel rum. <clears throat> Uh, so it is our Demamar sugar-based rum aged in that new American charred oak barrel and then finished in that uh, Cabernet barrel. It's really quite delicious. And so what we did for that one is that's coming out as a uh, Massachusetts independent retailer's bottling. Mm -hmm. So there's about five, six Okay, I, I gave you two numbers. Like so you're like my kids. I go five, six, and they go, yeah, five or six, somewhere in there, it, somewhere in there, and five it's or six. 120 proof something. Yeah, 120, 128 proof. proof. Wow. And um, will only be sold at finer, as Julio's is, uh, 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 finer independent <laughs> retailers across Massachusetts. And this is a way for no one to basically have too much of a one product that they may have a, a, a more difficult time selling and also a way for um, Mad River to show off the stuff that they can do in more outlets. So keep an eye out for that. We'll have an open bottle for you to try as we always do. Try before you buy is out of our, our, our slogan here at Julio's. And uh, so when you leave, leave here, you already know the answer, such as you already know the answer for all these great products tonight. So... May I ask, does anybody have any questions? No. No questions. No questions. See, you answered them all thoroughly. You were so thorough in your presentation, Mark, mm -hmm. that you actually did it. Which is your favorite? Oh, yes. Do you yes, give tours? Yes, we, um, we do tours. The tour is like, there's the doors over there, the other doors over there, <laughs> and everything in between is the distillery. Yep. It's small, but it's yes, small. we do we do tours and um, we love to we have do tastings. We do tours and tastings. But you also have a tasting room in Burlington, in Burlington, Burlington. a cocktail shop. Um, so we, um, Ryan, since you've been there last, we have a new facility um, that um, is our Rick House and our bottling, um, and uh, eventually will be. Um, a new distillery. We have a new still that's already arrived. It's in storage waiting. Cool. Um, but uh, you'll have to wait for that. I've got, I've got to come up with some cash first. So um, <laughs> get it out of storage. Yeah. Well, you got to build the building so, around it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we, um, so, so anyway, buy we buy more bad river so we can have more <laughs> mad river. Exactly. So anyway, so if you do want to come up for a tour, we, um, online uh we do it by reservation and we love to have people come and visit so no. you come up any four -wheel, time four wheel drive anytime make sure you have four wheel drive and uh never come up in the spring because mud season is real it's brutal Check out, check out too. They also have a whole line of pre-mixed cocktails that you guys uh, can get. Here, and there is Mike, all you can you can come right up in front here, because Mike, sure. Mike, yep. Mike, why oh, wave to everybody? <laughs> so we have uh, the pre-mixed cocktails, which are also very, very good. I like those too. And um, listen, they're they're a they're a, they're the real deal. I mean, the fact that all of these products come out of where they come out of to me is is totally amazing. Because I've seen people with three, four times the amount of space that can't produce one good item, never mind this many. So, so I once had a chef come and um, cook at my house. He's like, "Oh my God, you have more room in your kitchen than I do for my whole restaurant, and I don't have a huge kitchen, <laughs> so you do. don't." Yeah, well, but you, <laughs> not does. for a restaurant, but, yeah. uh, but the thing is, is that you don't need a lot of space to do great things. You have to be organized and disciplined and passionate about what you do. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. 
And All so- right, I'm going to tell then I, I you told the chef's story, then I'm going to tell the chef's story. Okay, you go ahead. The the, the uh, there was a uh, restaurant called the, the uh, was it the uh, Butter Creamery? It was in Connecticut. And oh, oh, Connecticut. Yeah, in you, Connecticut. You go? Yeah, well, I went out of country uh, to Connecticut. <laughs> and the funny part is that my, 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 we, my, our, my buddy and our wives came to this restaurant, and it's, it's, it was all, like, done. It's all, everything's from, like, scratch. Everything is done that way. And we're walking through the restaurant, and you actually walk through the, the kitchen to get into the restaurant. Oh and there's God. these chefs cooking on electric stoves and there's like two of them and they're like this close together and they're going and they're finishing it off. And I said, my buddy and I look at you like, you don't need that big kitchen, do you? Look at what these men are doing <laughs> behind the thing. I said, I didn't want to tell them that was just the finishing. That was just the finishing where they were just finishing stuff off. There was this yeah. huge kitchen underneath the place. Yeah. But it was a great, it, I was like, look at what these guys are doing. Yeah, exactly. In this little tiny kitchen. Okay. And they were very well organized. So to your point, it was yeah, absolutely you have to. You have to be on top of your game. That's yeah. right. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming here tonight. I want to thank, uh, of course, Maura for making it uh, all the way down here to the lower, the lower 40 um, <laughs> and, uh, and giving us all this great tasting uh, whiskey. Uh, everybody up there uh, still in Vermont. I want to t- thank Mo for produ- uh, producing some of the great cocktails for thank us this you. evening. Thank you. I want to thank all of you How for coming. How about Mike for organizing? Mike? Uh, we'll give Mike a half applause. Don't give him that much. It goes right to his head. Don't give him that much. Uh, I want to remind everybody that the, these guys will actually be back on November 2nd. November 2nd, um, 5 to 7, is our Whiskey Roadshow. You can get tickets, and it's a great deal. It's $50, it's $50 a ticket. You get $30 back in a gift card. You get uh, a, a glass worth at least $10. Bucks, and, we got, uh, <laughs> and we also have it's a glass. Uh, tasting glasses are ten dollars. You yeah, know what you pay for. They are. All right. So don't make fun of me. It's a tasting glass <laughs> for ten dollars, and that that's included. And you also wear uh, the food. We're going to do sliders from uh, Fireflies. Nice. So, Which segues into I. Now I did this big long thing to lead up to the fact. <laughs> I can't help myself. cuts me off. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I want to say, which from Fireflies, which now has over 450 different whiskeys that you can try at one of the best barbecue places in the country. And what do they carry? Mad they carry River. Mad River products, and they can get all of them right there. So you see how I did that, Mar? You see that how that was good? All right, all right. Beautifully thank executed. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It worked a lot better when I led into the whole thing, but... But thank you. No, I'm just teasing you. <laughs> All right. I want to thank you guys for showing up tonight. I really do appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, thank thank you guys. You. And we got a little bit of stuff to go over, but I have to get rid of the people on uh, Facebook. Facebook people, I'm sorry. You should have been here. It was awesome.